Gas chromatography, or GC for short, is a useful method for analyzing liquid organic compounds. It can test the purity and also identify the different compounds in a liquid mixture. The method in which it works is due to the action of the oven to vaporize the liquid mixture. Similar to TLC, this process operates under two principal phases, the stationary and the mobile phase. The stationary phase is the column, which absorbs the vaporized components of the compound traveling in the mobile phase based on dipole and ionic interactions, or dispersion forces. The mobile phase is the carrier gas that pushes the sample along in the column. The instruments in our labs use air as the carrier gas. Basically, the compounds are separated according to boiling points. Samples are introduced to the GC instrument by a glass syringe. You should be aware that these micro volume syringes are very fragile and very expensive to replace. Please handle with caution and do not pull the plunger back more than 50% of its total volume because the plunger could be pulled out and it is nearly impossible to reinsert it back into the syringe barrel. Start with cleaning the barrel by filling it with one third full with acetone, then expel on a kin wipe. Repeat this process two to three times. Never inject water or solids into the gas chromatography instruments because they will clog and destroy the column. First, collect a small amount of air, followed by approximately 0.1 to 0.2 microliter of sample into the syringe, and then once again pull in a small amount of air. This sandwiches the sample between air, which reduces the sample loss by evaporation. Finally, wipe the needle from barrel to tip with a kin wipe. Once the program is set to your specified settings, you're ready to inject. Hold the syringe with one hand and steady the needle with another while inserting the needle into the injection port. Do not remove the plunger yet. When you are ready, simultaneously depress the plunger and click the collect button to begin data collection. Pull the needle out immediately afterwards. The chromatogram is generated is a representation of signal plotted against time. As the compound exits the column, it arrives at the detector if we observe a peak. Each compound has a unique retention time under a given set of conditions. The time in which the maximum peak height is reached represents the retention time of the compound. The area under the curve, or the integration, represents the amount of compound present. Therefore, the more compound present, the larger the peak area. Once a chromatogram is generated, purity can be analyzed based on the comparison between how many peaks developed and how many were expected based on your sample. At times, when you're interested in the quantitative aspects of your sample, that is, you might want to figure out a concentration, you will need to integrate the chromatogram. Here is how you do it. Integration is the area under the peak, and you will want to measure from approximately where the peak starts to where it ends in the baseline to the best of your ability. The number that is produced is the integrated area. Be sure to record these values. You will need to compare these values within the same chromatogram to extract any valuable information. Therefore, it does not make sense to integrate just one peak. If there is an issue while generating the chromatogram, be sure to allow the instrument to finish rather than stopping the process because whatever that was in the instrument will linger into the next injection.
this video, you briefly learned that gas chromatography is a technique used to determine the composition of a liquid. You also learned how gas chromatography and the instrument works. You learned the proper way to handle a micro syringe as well as how to inject your sample into the instrument. Finally, you learned how to process and save the GC data.